What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Back Your Play with Q. Rich Quinone is here. As always, we are brought to you by our good friends over at Played Again Sports. Check them out online. They take uh, good and used sports equipment and they pay cash. 1450 Clements Bid Road in Defer, New Jersey. Our guy, Jovan Alford, kind enough to join us. Content producer from uh, the Sporting News at Jovan 10, also Total Sports Live. Um, I'm wondering if he has gotten over the theatrics we saw the oscars on sunday night but then we got a little bit of it earlier today with aaron Rodgers. i was waiting for smoke to appear right <laughs> like naming a new papal like a new a new pope uh what's going on brother? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good yeah mcafee did a did a good job of kind of you know set the seed i mean before he came yeah. on and they had the whole aaron Rodgers countdown clock to come on and it was he knows how to he he knows how to set the scene. He does a good man, job for two hundred million. Whatever he's getting paid twenty million a year, he better know how to um, build it up. You know, I I think part of me really felt he was going to retire or just go mm-hmm. back to the Packers and stick it to him because he's owed sixty million. By all accounts, he said, "Look, I'm I'm anticipating playing for the Jets." But you listen to the dialogue and the conversation today, and he is basically you know, calling everyone out, you know, he, he, he gave credit and he spoke highly of the fan base and the players and, but it was more of the passive aggressive digs to Murphy um, and the administration, how, you know, Green Bay ran the show. And part of me thinks, is there any possible way that Green Bay turns around and he says, you know what, screw this guy. He can go back in his hole. We're not trading him, or we want the jets now to give us X, Y, and Z. And if they don't, we'll stick them on the roster. And let him hold a clipboard for sixty million, or let him deal with it. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Jets, the I mean, if you're the Packers, the ball's in your court, right? You can dictate the terms of you know this of of this trade now with him acting the way he's acted. You they could make a make a play where it's like, okay, well, you feel this way, but we also, and I think Rogers obviously doesn't see it this way, but they have to do what's best for them too. Yeah. Um, in this in this matter, like they have to. They have to get as much as they can, you know, for their team because they're not rebuilding, but they're retooling. So if they got to get three first round picks from the Jets, well, hey, if that's what you're willing to pay for a franchise quarterback, they'll take it. If they want to get, you know, two firsts and a couple of young players to help with them, like, hey, if you're the Packers, you got to do with if, if Rodgers is doing what the best he's doing in his interest. And if you're the Packers, you got to do the same thing. Like you got to build around Jordan Love now. Yeah, and I feel for the Jets, you know, they're not going to make a move for Lazard thinking Zach Wilson's throwing footballs to Lazard. Right. Um, so they they kowtowed, right? They, they, they cater to Aaron Rodgers, um, and this can still get stretched out, but it does look like it's, you know, pretty much a done deal. I did find it interesting, though. You know, he's calling out all the NFL insiders, whether it's Rappaport, whether it's Schefter, you know, hey, man, lose my number, you know, this and that. I mean, he just reminds me, I got scorn lover, right, trying to sneak off in the middle of the night. I mean, he's like an elephant. So he he doesn't forget. Now, all of a sudden, people think he's going to come out and light the word on fire. I'm not seeing it, man. I'm not seeing it. Last year, their offense, the Jets was predicated on running the football and, and Hall's yes. come off a major injury. And surgery. So there's no guarantee uh-huh. he's going to be 100%, right? It takes a year or so. Now you got to have Rodgers, who's been beat up a little bit behind some bad offensive lines here and there, take a lot of shots. Um, who knows, man? And, and I thought the best course of action was to try to get this done so fast. And then mentally you move on. And then maybe, you know, you have an opportunity um, when it's time, you know, you toss around the ball with some of these wide receivers, you get acclimated to some of your teammates. And I just think it's been sloppy from the get-go. And I believe, too, if they don't get to the Super Bowl and win it, it's a mitigated disaster. Then what was the point of bringing him? What was the point of giving up the future? What was the point of giving up on Zach Wilson? What was the point of giving up draft picks if it's one year, one and done? Right. No, you definitely, if you're if you're a Jets fan, the expectations have now risen, right? You got to win the division. You got to get into the playoffs. And yeah, would you like to get Super Bowl? Yeah, but... Yeah. The goal is, can you get to the AFC title game with this young core? And will Aaron Rodgers be able to work with this young core? Because remembering when we saw with Green Bay, he wasn't necessarily too fond of the younger wide receivers and the nope. growing pains that they went with. And you would think a quarterback of his stature, right? We talked about how his play wasn't great last season, right? Now, part of the people could say, well, he didn't have Devontae Adams. However, if he's a great quarterback like he is and a future Hall of Famer, 
you elevate the play of those around you. And he did not do that. I felt like, and now you're going to step into a bigger situation. Don't get me wrong. Green Bay is a great football city. It's historic. You know, when I talk about the football landscape, the fans are, et cetera, but New York's a different, a different animal. <laughs> We're talking about just media and just expectations. Like he has to come in and light the world on fire. He can't yeah. start off one and three, nope. two and two, nope. uh, oh, and four. Cause if he does, that's it. That's it. You're that's cooked. it. And I love when people say, oh, you know, I don't want to hear about the, the media. They don't push. It. Yeah, they do. The media does push. There are certain players that are meant to play in Boston, Chicago, D.C., Philadelphia, New York. Some of them fall under pressure. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't. I mean, we saw for years, Scott Rowland hated the media. And, you know, again, towards the end, he started to crack a little bit. A guy like Harper thrives in it. You look in New York, some players haven't handled it over the years. Um, Eli was able to handle it. Nothing bothered him. Other quarterbacks along the way, even with the Jets, they could not handle it. And then conversely, if you're Green Bay, you went from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. And what do you have to show for? Two Super Bowls. Yeah. Two and, Super Bowls. And, 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 in and, and, what, and 30 winnable, years? Yeah. And win, in, in, in winnable NFC, NFCs over the years. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing about Rodgers, right? for as great as he was, but there's only one Super Bowl. And there's countless of times that this team has been in an NFC title game. We're not talking like 10 years ago. We're talking like the last five to seven years they've been in this spot and they couldn't get it done. Or the year where, was last year where they got beat in the in the second well, second round, I think, yeah. to the Niners, and they didn't have right. no offense. And that falls, and it falls on him. And I just also find it funny how, you know, he – he, he, he talked up and praised Jordan Love at the same time. It's not like he had an issue with them, obviously, drafting him. Yeah. But that's the same thing that happened when Brett Favre was there. They drafted Rodgers to be heir apparent. So it's like you're seeing, like, the circle of life, like, happening, uh, like, revolving around him. Right. And it's like, this is happening to you, but you're taking it the wrong way. Now, will it, it end up like how Favre did in the Jets and then he went to the Vikings? Likely, that's probably going to be how the story, you know, pans out. I'll tell him. you this though, you know, from an NFC fan, NFC um, East, uh, NF, NFC East, and then, um, you know, just a fan in that regard, I'm happy that he's out of the conference because he's still Aaron Rodgers. Now he's not the same quarterback, yeah. but you give him that puncher's chance. Um, and speaking of the NFC, so you saw the Giants make a move for a linebacker that I like, uh, short up defensive tackle. They basically fleeced the Raiders for yeah. a while. I mean, look, if that kid is healthy and engaged, he's going to catch 50, 60 plus balls, seven, 800 yards. He's a red zone target. Uh -huh. uh, they re-signed Brita. They tag Saquon. Danny Nichols got his money. I mean, so, you know, you're bringing some offensive weapons back in place. Wasn't too enamored with bringing Shepard back, but I get it from a leadership standpoint, right. Hodgins and whatnot. Um, but the Giants have shown, listen, we're, we're going to be busy because we're looking across and we're looking down the turnpike and we're seeing that the Philadelphia Eagles are losing players. So we got to be active and we have to do what we need to do to compete because they're still not near where the Eagles are in talent. They're not, but right. that's not a bad start. No, it's not a bad start. And if you're a Giants fan, you do have to be, you know, you have to be inspired and encouraged to see what they're doing. Right. Like you said, they go get a good linebacker uh, from the Colts uh, or Kikari. I think that's how you say his name. Mm -hmm. You add him to the defense um like you said you get you get you know Darren Waller who's uh, you know even though he had a down year last year he's still one of the best five to ten oh, yeah. tight ends in the league and like you said when he's healthy and he's engaged you know he, he he's going to thrive and we saw what Brian Dable was able to do with you know Dolphin Knox to the last season he was there in Buffalo Dolphin Knox game went to another level yeah. and now you're taking a guy of Waller's caliber and adding him, you know, with Dayball in the offense where they still don't have a number one wide receiver, we'll see what they do there. He he's going to get the targets, which is I going to so. help out the Isaiah Hodges, the Shepherds, the Richie James, and hopefully they do add another wide receiver, but even help out Saquon because yeah. now teams can't game plan and be like, all right, we got we know the ball's going to Saquon here, right? Or we know the ball's going to Hodgins. Now you got to say, hold on, Darren Waller's here, and he's gonna warrant you know some double team sometimes yep. either from the linebacker or the safety over the top so if you're a Giants fan I think you should be you should be encouraged because this is what you want to see and I think that's what happens when you have a change in management a change in leadership of guys that want to come in and like build up a contender and you've seen that they didn't rest on the laurels of hey we made the playoffs we won a game all right we're good they're like no we want to compete and still yeah. you know try to find ways to get better 
a uh, lot of movement in the NFC East. Cowboys uh, will cut Ezekiel Elliott. Um, and it does appear that the Eagles are parting ways with Darius Slay. Um, Hargrave, listen, I don't think he's worth that money. But again, if you were able to get it, more power, you, more power right. to you. No right. more Sanders. You know they're going to work out a deal with um, uh, Gardner Johnson. You know they're going to work out a deal, obviously, with Bradbury. Uh, and then the move for Penny. And again, this is almost like a Waller type of move where if healthy, right? Because he's a big time running back. I'm surprised the Miles Sanders era ended. And I'm also, I'm a little surprised that they're not going to try to make it work money-wise, contract-wise with um, Slade. But I almost get the sense he's he's not one to take that home team discount. That's, yeah, that's that's the same vibes I get with Slade. Like, he's the guy, and I think we saw Derek Gunn, uh, established reporter here in Philly, you know, say that Slade, you know, wanted a, a three-year extension is just like mm, can't do that at 32 i'm sorry right <laughs> i understand you want the money but like you said yeah. it shows like he still wants to get that one more big deal which you know it's fine and it didn't and i honestly think it didn't help either with you know you see him entertaining like other players you know on twitter saying hey you want to come play in like jacksonville want to come play yeah. in like chicago yeah. and atlanta and it's just like it doesn't look good. It almost looked like you're trying to get past something and be like, well, I can go there. I can go there. Right, like right. you didn't get to your number one school and you're like, I guess I can consider to go there. And that's, I think where he's at. And who knows, who, who knows if he's going to get that big money deal at his age. Cause he was solid for the first part of the year, but there was a start to slip a little bit in his play. So with him, you know, leaving you, obviously the Eagles did resign Bradbury and he, another one that, I think a lot of people thought like, yo, he's going to get a big deal. He's not going to come back. He played well after, you know, Giants released him. A guy that took a pay cut. He said, you know, yep. I could have went elsewhere to get bigger money, but I took the pay cut. Brandon Graham, another people who, another person who a lot of people thought like, he might be out the door, <laughs> you know, it'd be crazy if he is, but he took the pay cut and said, I want to play here. I want to win. I want to play with Jalen, like things like that. Slay, it's kind of like on the opposite end of that spectrum yeah and hey like you said the same thing with hargrave right if that's get your money right get you it. get that big payday go ahead and get it but at the same time you gotta weigh which one's more important right at, at your stage of career winning yeah, and that's, or, that's the thing too especially if if you won right i mean you know with kelsey coming back you're right once you win obviously they weren't able to win this year losing late to kansas city in the super bowl but no matter what you're going to have more opportunities come free agency. Um, mm -hmm. The quarterback movement is just crazy, right? Imagine, you know, the Raiders get rid of Carr, but then they bring Jimmy G and then Jimmy G ultimately loses a weapon. Then you've got Baker Mayfield signing with the Bucks. Uh, you've got um, uh, uh, Sam Darnold and it, where'd Sam Darnold sign? It totally San Francisco. San Francisco, right. It's totally escapes me. Darnold in San Francisco now. So who knows what's going on? Um, with, with their quarterback situation, uh, the Panthers just signed uh, Hayden Hurst, it looks like. So uh, the Bucks are making moves defensively. I mean, it's just been a crazy 24 to 48 hours. And I think now that we see the Rodgers domino effect, um, I think some teams that were quarterback needy were waiting to see if or when he was going to come out of the woodwork mm -hmm. and kind of hiding and make that decision. Matt Ryan's release, Carson Wentz is out there. Heineke is no longer with Washington. Lamar Jackson's got, you know, uh, his situation in Baltimore. Um, I feel as though, <laughs> and I say it jokingly, I was going to tweet, but then I decided, let me see how this plays out. Part of me is like, when is Washington going to sign Matt Ryan? Right. Like, you, it's just retread, retread, retread. And then I still think, man, if they're smart, they make a push for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, you would think that they would, but then when we see them going after a guy like Jacoby Brissett, it seems like, all right, we'll try to, you know, roll with him and that, a death. Yeah, bridge quarterback, right? To see, like, again, he's going to, he played, I think, honestly, he played better than what Deshaun Watson showed in Cleveland in that offense. And maybe if they don't make that switch, Browns might be sniffing a playoff spot, but that's neither here nor there. You get him and, like you said, overall, the quarterback position in the NFL is just going to look very different next year. Like it's, it's going to look very weird in a lot of spots, right? You mentioned Garoppolo yep. going out west to pair of McDaniels, but 
he's no better an upgrade than Derek Carr. I agree. Who's in New Orleans, and Carr is not really a big upgrade from Dalton, who's in Carolina. And Baker Mayfield gets a one-year, eight and a half million dollar deal. But what did Baker Mayfield do to get an eight and a half million dollar deal? Because he played in the Sean McVay offense and looked somewhat like a regular starter. Probably because he also came off the plane and had that come from behind win, right? And oh yeah. Like, uh, you know, so the so maybe that, so maybe Tampa think they can get something out of him in a competition with Trask, but <laughs> probably can. At least you know you have a viable option as a veteran with a young kid. Right. Then you got the Colts, and let's not for a second let's not dismiss the Colts pursuing Lamar Jackson, right? Because mm-hmm. if they're not completely sold on any of these quarterbacks in the draft, then you know this that that might be a team to kind of watch going forward in Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. I think if you're Shane Steichen, if you're an and Ursa, definitely probably wouldn't have no problem right. making that move, especially because, and I think we talked about this before, the Colts are in a very winnable division. It's a very winnable dis- division. And if you add Lamar to that team that already has a Michael Pittman that yep. has a, back. A, 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 they have, right, Jonathan Taylor, they have a, 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 a rookie wide receiver, Alec Pierce, who stepped up and showed flashes last season. You add him to a Shane Steichen offense, and we kind of seen what that Steichen offense was able to do last year, the two seasons that he was here with the Eagles, where, and I think it probably would benefit Lamar in that they weren't running the ball more, they were passing a lot, and maybe that helps some because, hey, I have Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. That's the best running back I've had in my career right. that I can hand the ball off to. And you're going to play in division where Tennessee's down. Houston will probably start a rookie quarterback, obviously. And then Jacksonville. They can they do had it again? A, right. Can they do it again? You had a hot start. You had a, I mean, you had a slow start, but a hot finish. Can you play a full season as the team that's the hunted in that division? So, I mean, like you said, if you're, if you're Indianapolis, I think you got to think about it because, Lamar's what 26 27 still in the prime of his career two first round you you would take you know a couple picks to do it but at the the division that you're in you can make the playoffs a lot with him if you already have the pieces there to make it successful yep agree 100 Javon Alford join us Wednesday edition of BYP with Q Rich Quinones here uh, courtesy of our good friends over at Played Against Sports, 1450 Clements Bridge Road in Deptford. Open seven days a week. They pay cash for good used items. Check them out online. Give them a follow on social media. Um, all right, let's switch gears for a couple minutes while I have you uh, with March Madness. You know, I, I, I was looking at, you know, these games and these first round matchups, and I have no problem with the top seeds, right, Kansas. I still think Purdue is going to get bounced early. Uh, Houston, Alabama. I look at some of the teams that didn't get in and, you know, again, everyone was hooting and hollering about Rutgers and then they turn around and they lose to Hofstra last night. So it's like, come on, man, right. stop. you were horrible in your conference. You were 19 and 10, 10 and 10 in the conference. You had bad losses. Nothing stood out. Clemson, I can argue a different animal. I think any other year, 23 and 10, 14 and six in conference play gets you mm-hmm. an automatic bid. But that being said, I feel as though people are, uh, again, a little juiced and jacked up over Duke. Mind you, they've got the 12th seed in Oral Roberts. And then right. UConn seems to be that sleeper pick. But I would also turn around and say, well, you're going against Iona. That's pretty hot right now against Rick Patino. So those are just two. I know there's plenty. But when you look at these first round matchups, um, what game or games kind of stand out? Is it eight and nine? Is it 12 and five? Are you looking at six and 11, seven and 10? What are some of the matchups that stand out? Uh, For me, I think it's a lot of like those eight and nine matchups, right? Yeah. You look at that West Virginia, Maryland matchup, that first one that's going to start off tomorrow, yep. a West Virginia team that you're kind of like, eh, they don't do nothing special, but they got themselves in. Maryland had a tough slide, you know, at the end where a couple of close losses but they played in a very good Big Ten. So you're kind of seeing like which way does like, you know, the bracket fall for them. And then you look at Auburn, Iowa, another 8-9 matchup. Auburn, you know, haven't looked like the Auburn that we saw last year, right? But they yeah, also had yep. they also had two first round picks, right? And Kessler and Jabari Smith. Now they are, they have a they're, they're a solid team this season. But again, a team that suffers from that suffer from a lot of they couldn't get the job done yep. in a lot of close games, which you gotta do in March and you look at Iowa, right? They're always good in the, they're always good in the regular season, right? Fran McCaffrey always gets it done, but somehow in the postseason, they somehow find a way to lose like they did um, 
in 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 last year's game against Richmond as when Richmond was the 12. So just those games. And then obvi- obviously, I think everybody's waiting to see, you know, how Charleston looks, right? Because there's a lot of, you know, people looking at, you know, them. And I think Florida Atlantic, a lot of people. They had uh, that Penn, great run. Right. Penn State, Texas A&M, I think is another yep. fun game. Just because the Nittany Lions, I think uh, that Nittany Lions are a sleeper team to me just because I, I believe, you know, they don't, again, they don't do nothing special. But they're a veteran latent team. And they, you know, when if you watch people watching them play this season in the Big Ten, they didn't like kind of bow down to nobody and even gave Purdue a fight in a game where they were down late and still found a way to come back. So I think there's a lot of good, you know, first round matchups. You know, the people should, you know, either your bracket or you're, you know, betting on them. There's a lot of good matchups where you can swing, you know, some money lines and some in some in some close spreads to mess around with. Uh Penn State has Texas A&M. That's 10-7. You mentioned that FAU against Memphis. Um, FAU, remember, they had that, like that 19-game winning streak. I mean, I don't know. I think they're the only team in the field that won 30-plus games this year. I think they won 31. Yeah. There's another I think. Team. I think maybe what, Charleston? And Charleston maybe, maybe like who was the Furman might be the other closest okay. ones, but not. I think they might be outside the 30, but they're up yeah. there with like – how good Charleston has been. And then you've got your classic 12-5 matchups, uh, VCU and St. Mary's. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, is there a team you look at and you say, okay, can they be this year's version of last year's uh, St. Pete's, right? They they went through Kentucky, Murray State, Purdue. I mean, think about it. They, they knocked off number two, number seven, number three, respectively. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I look at the guard-heavy teams. I think it'll play out with the top seeds. UCLA, I know they're a little banged up. That's one of the teams I was looking at. I think Purdue's too one-dimensional. We talked about them a lot. Um, Miami, they play good defense. You know, Arizona, Arizona might be, but again, look at their seating, right? They got right. Princeton first. Um, I don't know. I, I I will say that that West bracket is, that's a tough bracket, man, for Kansas. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you're talking about, UCLA, you're talking Gonzaga, UConn for St. Mary's, who was a thorn in a lot of people's sides, you know, this season. Even, you know, look, yeah, even TCU for as much as TCU had to struggle. We saw this same TCU team last year make a make a run and gave Arizona, you know, a a heart attack in that in the bracket last year. So I'd like you said, yeah, West region is definitely tough. And for me, like that team that can make a run. I think, and we you mentioned Purdue, right? I think it could be, um, if if either probably could be FAU or Oral Roberts. I think one of those two could do it. Oral Roberts, I know a lot of people probably, you know, might be hesitant because they might be like the public, like underdog that could take down like Duke. But people got to remember this team is this team is a very good offense. This team's experienced too. Second year and past three times they've been in the tournament. They are not new to this you know, ball game here. And then if you look, if they get past them, they're what looking at Tennessee and Louisiana, Louisiana. Yeah. And again, I like a team, like you said, guard play comes down to it. And they got a very good mid major, you know, guard and Max Abus who, you know, took the tournament by storm a couple of years ago. And even in the game that they lost, what to the sweet 16 that year, they only lost about what two points. So yeah, this team is, that team, that team could definitely, definitely do something. And I know a lot of people also are leaning towards Furman and how they and how they play. I think uh, that Duke team, when you look at it, you can. I think right now they're eight to one to get to the Final Four, maybe even mm-hmm. to win it all. I saw like plus four seventy five. Um, I think that line's only six. Yeah, six, six and a half. So, so you know, um, I, I was going to joke with you and say I, I don't know. That line's telling me something. The phrase that I can't <laughs> friggin' stand with half of these half-ass guys that think they know sports, man. What, what is it saying? What's the line telling you, please? Right. <laughs> Let me know what the line is telling you to share with the rest of the friggin' world, will you? Um, yeah, I, I you know, I, I could have made the argument Rutgers is better than Nevada. Nevada gets an opportunity for the playing game, but I'm not crying too much um, for Rutgers. I'll tell you a game that I'm looking at, too. Um, I think it's Mizzou against Utah State. Mm-hmm. A lot of people project Utah State to maybe even upset the apple cart and get past Zona if or when Zona gets past Princeton. I'm not necessarily buying it, but I might sprinkle something on Utah State and then NC State against Creighton. Um, I like NC State 
Um, I, you know, I, I think they're almost getting five in this. I, I'd have to double check. So I'm not going to go too, too heavy. And I, I just, I really like enjoying the tournament. Like I can see perhaps Kent state beating uh, Indiana. Indiana. Right. Yeah, because so they're getting five. They haven't, this is the first time they've been in the tournament since 2017. They're looking for the first one in the tournament since 2002 but they play Charleston, Houston, and Gonzaga pretty tough, right? Right. They play good defense. So Indiana might be catching them at the wrong time, um, if that makes sense. And, yeah, I I still think Zona, UCLA, you know, Houston, Alabama, uh, waiting to see what happens with Purdue, man, because if if they don't don't make a deep run, I, I I look at it as a very disappointing season. I mean, you just look at how, look at what happened happened to them last year, right? They lose the they lose the St. Peter's on a team that had Edie and Jaden Ivy, and they couldn't get it done in that matter. And now they're the number one seed. And like you said, a lot of people can make the you make the case and claim that they're not the strongest number one seed in this field. Like everybody primes them for they could be upset. And then say if they don't get FAU in the next round, then they got to take on Memphis, a Memphis team that just beat Houston. Yep. in the AAC title game. And this Memphis team just played in the second round last year against Gonzaga and kind of had them on the ropes. Obviously, Gonzaga's talent took over with Holmgren and Timmy and those guys. But they, again, another veteran team that can do something and won't be afraid of the moment. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we made it right. to the to the second round. It's like, no, we've been here before. But yeah, it's, it's going to be fun though. I, I think this year, even though we don't have like the star studded names like we had in previous years where you knew like star freshman at Duke, star freshman at Kentucky, North Carolina. I think this year is just going to be fun because there's no clear cut. Like Correct. this team is going to go and do it. And that's what we want. We want a little parody. I don't think they need to expand the field. I think it's saturated uh-uh. sometimes. I know people will harp on the mid majors and the smaller conferences. I get it. Um, you could you could maybe let a few of those more in if you wanted to. So, but then you gotta you're you're now we're talking wow we're we're bleeding into late late April for this. Well, I mean I mean switching switching some a uh, power school. Oh, okay, out for yeah, yeah, energy. exactly, exactly. I, I've heard people say actually expand. Oh no 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 no. That's that's why we have the NIT. We had the NIT, well, um, and no um, disrespect to the NIT. I love the uh, NIT, but un- unless you're in North Carolina, then you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> they said no. We're okay with that. <laughs> we snubbed the nose. Um, what, are you dropping a, a pod this week for um Total Sports Live or? Yeah, we just recorded one yesterday. Uh, looking at uh the Eagles moves, talked about you know some of the things that happened in NFC East. Gilmore going to the Cowboys, Waller to the Giants. Then looked at what the Eagles did with Penny and. Um, we sign on Bradbury and just, you know, what's next for them? What are they going to do in the backfield? You know, mm-hmm. are they going to be cool with just those guys? Are they going to draft some people? We kind of lean towards they are going to draft some people and talk about some options who they could draft. So, yeah, new pod out right now. Awesome. So everyone out there, definitely uh, give Jovan a follow. at Jovan 10, give him a, a follow on the pod as well. Subscribe and like and share and comment. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling in another week or two, we can kind of get a little more into the NFL draft. I think once the dust kind of settles. Yeah, kind of see where everybody yeah, kind of yeah. is laying and now, in. Like, all right, yeah, now, now the mock gotta, draft is looking clear. We, we got to get the brackets all straightened out. Um, so <laughs> first things first, man, baby steps. But um, I always appreciate uh, you jumping on board a, a Wednesday edition of BYP. Again, everyone give Jovan a follow at Jovan10. He's been on fire with his NBA player props, XFL. I know I missed you last week. I don't even want to know how well you did in the XFL. I see you tweeting about it. I'm like, man, this guy's really getting all bent out of shape with these late scores and these backdoor covers with the XFL. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> two and two, two and two last week, two right. and two last week. All right, you pay break even. Juice, you're okay break with even. that. That's yep. Break even is better than going out of your pocket. But um, there you go. I always appreciate you, brother. And uh, don't forget, uh, Jovan joins us every week. Kind enough to join us on a Wednesday edition of BYP. We will do it again next week. Uh, good luck with the brackets. Good luck with the NBA, the uh, player props and whatnot. And so, of course, uh, your uh, your little baby, your XFL. So hopefully uh, <laughs> you can brag a little more about some of your winning picks next week. All right. Sounds good. All right. You got it. There you have it.